Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be bringing you a sculpting tutorial and this is a tutorial on how to sculpt phoenix claws and I wanted to sculpt these phoenix claws because um, I have a phoenix doll that I never made claws for so here it is, so stay tuned. So I normally sculpt my things out of monster clay. I use monster clay because I um, make molds and cast them in resin. So monster clay is a uh, wax based uh, clay and it doesn't harden. So it's no use to you if you want something that hardens. So I'd suggest using Sculpey or something. Right, so I'm starting off with some soft monster clay and I'm just doing a little tube to begin with and this will be the middle claw of the phoenix foot. And this claw is usually longer than the other two so um, just keep that in mind when you're adding the other two claws. And the monster clay I'm using is quite soft, it's not runny, um, so just pop it in the microwave for about two minutes and you'll have a nice soft malleable monster clay. Now I have a video uh, just going through all of the different clays that I use, um, it's uh, in the little preview up ahead, I'll try to remember to link it down below so it will help you out if you have any questions about that. Alright now adding the uh, two other toes on the side of that longer toe and the same process just making that tube and I'm using that little ball tool to make a little indentation for the claws to sit into and um, you can, it's a Sculpey tool so you can find it uh, on their website or even any craft stores um, and this particular foot is going to have um, three claws and one back claw. So the top of this foot will actually have a longer bit of the scaly feet so I wanted it to be um, quite long up the top and as you can see I'm adding that longer bit up the top using a thicker piece of monster clay and you can see by the way it's bending that it's not quite hardened yet so it is still quite soft and that way you can mould it into the rest of your monster clay. Right now I'm going in with this little shaving tool just because I want to create some um, dimension to the toes. Bird feet aren't quite uh, tubular so they have a bit of bone structure in it so I'm doing the carving right now just to create that bone structure in the feet. And again, this uh, monster clay still is quite soft, so you can see how it um, carves nicely. Um, you can carve it when it's hard, you know, it just depends what you want to do. Now I'm going in with a Stanley knife just to create a bit more space between the two toes and it doesn't look so sausage fingers. Um, and my Stanley knife broke, so I've only got the nub of it, <laughs> which is kind of annoying, but I'll have to go out and buy a new one. So just carving out the bottom section of the phoenix feet because you don't want them flat, it just looks really unrealistic and you know it just lets your sculpture down a little bit. Now there's all sorts of different rake tools that you can buy, this is just something that I found as a pottery tool. Um, you can make your own out of um, a various different things, so you can use saw blades or guitar strings but I've just got this one from a pottery thing. So I decided these two toes weren't as short as I wanted them to be. So I just cut them off with that Stanley nub and um, redid those little ball joints with that ball tool and then just carved a little bit out with that pottery tool. And what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit of webbing to the toes. So I wanted it to be a bit more realistic and if I didn't add the webbing then it just looks a bit weird. So here it is in real time, just to show you how long this actually takes. It took me roughly four to five hours to sculpt these feet. Um, I just did one pair because I'm going to uh, you know, mold it and cast it in resin so I don't need uh, two pieces to sculpt. So just doing the other side of the webbing and it is a lot shorter so I go back later on and fix it up. Uh, to make it a little bit more symmetrical. <laughs> yeah. 
So again, just going in and refining the bits between the toes because I wanted it to be a bit more raptor-like and um, a bit scarier. So I used an eagle claw for reference for this sculpture and I highly recommend if you're sculpting anything to get as many references as you can because it really does help you along the way to sculpt something that's symmetrical and realistic. Right, so I'm adding a bit more um, dimension to the top of the toes just so they look a bit uh, more bony and you can see the tendon pop out of the toes and you know it, it's very um, it's very prominent in raptor birds that their tendons are coming out of the top of their toes so I wanted to add just a thin strip of monster clay to bring that tendon out a bit more. And you can see that monster clay is quite soft. It's not runny soft, but you don't want it too runny because it doesn't keep its shape if it's not um, hard enough. So just to note that, um, make sure your monster clay is the right temperature so you can um, roughly sculpt and mold. And I'm just blending it in here with some, they're called dentistry tools and you can find them online anywhere. They're pretty cheap, but um, they come in handy when you need them to do things like this. So the better thing with metal tools is you can be a bit more aggressive when you're um, smoothing out things and carving things out rather than uh, wooden or plastic tools. So I've had wooden tools break on me when I've applied a bit of pressure onto it. Um, so I much prefer the metal tool. Okay, so I'm not going to go through each tendon because it's, you know, the same process and I think you get a bit bored watching the same process. So um, I'm just doing the other side of the tendon um, and I've already done the uh, opposite side to this one. So same process. Alright, so I'm just going in and making some claws and um, funny thing is I kind of used some of my um, claws that I did for my Drogon <laughs> sculpture and I just, uh, you know, cut them off so they fit nicely and I didn't have to sculpt claws anymore. Um, so I just fit them into that little dome space that I created with that ball tool and they fit in nicely so I'm just going in now and um, just working that monster clay into that ball socket. So here's a little overview of one that I did roll out if you don't have bits already made. So it's just rolled out in a sausage with a pointy tip, nothing special, pretty easy to do. And again, just putting it into that ball socket area and working it into the other side of the monster clay. All right, so here's that part where I, I am fixing the webbing, uh, where I did notice that it was, um, wasn't was symmetrical. So I'm just adding a little bit more and working it into the monster clay to make sure that it is the right size. And as you can see, it's ready for scales. So I tried a few different methods of scales because um, I wasn't really happy with the ones that I tried. So this is the first one that I tried. I just carved out some spaces, uh, ridges out of the monster clay itself. And I wasn't really happy with the way this looked. So I'm um, not going to spend too much time showing you what I did here, but um, I would prefer to show you what mistakes I made or things that I'm unhappy with just because not everyone's perfect. Alright, so the technique that I ended up going for is to uh, roll out really, really, really thin pieces of monster clay and I have added them on top of the actual toe pieces and I much preferred the way this looked. It might be a bit bulkier, but that's okay. I don't mind that look either. Um, yeah, just rolling out little tiny pieces of monster clay and laying them on top of each other. So 
So I only did these longer strips for the four toe area tops and also the top of the leg bit because I wanted to add a bit more character to the toe pieces rather than have all scales but I'm not going to go through the whole process of doing it so here it is all finished and laid on top and ready for the smaller scales around those pieces. So I tried a few different techniques for the smaller scales, so I'll just show you a couple of them that I did that I wasn't really happy with. The first one I did was use this um, piece of thin plastic and my intention was to um, carve out the little bits using a sharper tool not to actually carve into but to make sort of an indentation of the scale area and you know it works really well for something that you know you want like that but I just really didn't like the look of this so I decided not to do the rest of the foot in this particular technique. This particular technique is good for things like elephant skin um, or rhinoceros skin or dinosaur skin. Um, it creates a good texture. Um, maybe I'll do a video on that, so if you want a video on that, leave it in the comments below. Now the second technique I tried was um, using some print scale, the same as I did for my Drogon video here. And you can check it out, I'll try and link it in the... Uh, info box down below. It's just a quick tutorial on how to make some dragon skin. Now I decided against this technique as well because I just didn't like the way it looked. It just looked a bit, I don't know, fake or something. I just really wasn't happy with it. So I ended up scraping all of the um, dragon skin off and starting again. Now the technique that I did decide to go for was rolling tiny little balls and sticking them on the surface and this took so long. Of course I chose the longest one to work. But at the end of the day I much prefer the way this looks so if it takes a bit of time and you're happy with the way your sculpture looks then by all means take as long as you need. So basically this technique was just rolling up a little tiny ball and pressing it onto the surface of your sculpture. So I'm not going to go through the whole entire process of sticking tiny little circles onto a piece of clay because I think you get the idea of me showing you a small bit. Now I'm going in and doing some further carving on the underside of the claws. So um, only a short bit because we've seen the carving before but I just wanted to show you that I did some more carving on the bottom side of the feet. Alright, so I'm just going to show you another little time lapse of um, sticking little dots on a clay bit because it, that's really exciting. I had the time of my life sticking these little clay dots on. Woo! Alright, so what I ended up doing is um, <laughs> picking little tiny bits off a clay piece so it's a bit easier to um, roll them up and stick them onto your clay piece. So just a little advice, roll up little dots to begin with and you won't have to pick them off every time you want to stick a dot on. Okay, so the underside of a uh, eagle's foot is kind of um, textured rather than scaled. So I decided to go in with this wooden tool and it's just a wooden pottery tool um, just to poke out some little textured areas underneath the foot. Um, not too long, you know, I got it done in about 15-20 minutes um, and it just involves poking that little stick tool into the monster clay. Alright, so here's that finished piece again and I'll just do another little spin around. So um, it is ready for moulding and casting now. 
That's it for me today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. You can also catch me on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. If you have any requests, leave it in the comments down below and I'll catch you in the next one.